You don't know what you're dealing with, do you? The Vermilion are the pure first-generation progeny of the Great Devourer. I have never heard of them. Because we do not speak of them. They have the same singular drive as the Great Devourer to consume everything in their path. Scales and Zane. Hello, I'm Sensei Darkmaster, and today we shall be discussing the Vermilion. Let us start with their origins and then go over their structure, weaponry, vehicles, and noteworthy characteristics, as well as individuals. The Vermilion were born into existence from the eggs produced by the Great Devourer sometime before her banishment. From there, it appears that through some sort of incestuous magic, Crux, the older of the Time Twins, allowed them to multiply exponentially. They would fight the ninja throughout the seventh season. Their army was legion, so let us start with their biology and then go over the individuals and wider structure. Despite being vaguely humanoid serpentine, they were actually completely different than both serpentine and humans. Actually, their true forms are a mass of serpents who range in color from bright orange to red. They can form a more humanoid form via their telepathic control aided by specifically designed armor. Speaking of armor, there appears to be two types of helmets and two types of chest armor. One is a bulkier set that is stronger. The other is more slick and worn mostly by Blunk. These sets, of course, can be combined or not worn at all, as in the case of General Machia. Specific helmets apparently allow individuals to control the Vermilion race, and these are employed by two of the generals. Interestingly, they appear to have translucent snakes, Though this may just be a mirage. The vermilion apparently reproduce via eggs with silver shells and red spots on either end. Each of these eggs, when hatched, releases several vermilion snakes, meaning that there are multiple embryos within each egg. These serpents attack any non-vermilion in the area and can fuse into the foot soldiers of the army. These include Slackjaw, Rivet, Tannin, Vermin, and numerous other unnamed soldiers in orange and red. They can also seemingly manifest fangs and eyes, seemingly independent of their component snakes, though whether this is another mirage cannot be decided at this time. With Sufficient snakes, much larger builds, can be created. In addition to various unknown forms, there are the infamous Buff Million. Their arms are the only humanoid a part of their body. Indeed, they don't even have humanoid heads. They are comparatively rare and are the meanest slash strongest of the Vermilion. They serve as shock troopers and are called the Big Boy by Machia. In regards to vehicles, the Vermilion use their snakes to control various vehicles and perform sabotage. However, the army's typical vehicles are far more standardized, with three main vehicles known. The Vermilion Invader serves as a heavy tank. It runs on a single tread and is armed by a pair of catapults that use eggs as artillery. They are relatively common. There is the smaller Vermilion Racer, used for faster attacks and travel, ironically only seen in the assault of the Timber of Air Jitsu. There is a third unnamed vehicle that is extremely obscure, that is a smaller flyer. There is also the Iron Doom, a huge mech that could travel in time with the aid of the Time Blades. For weaponry, they wield special translucent blades and axes, with original serpentine-esque slash gorgon-inspired blades. 
Leading these forces are the three generals selected as the strongest and most cunning of their race genetically. With the pair Ragmunk and Blunk, that's not really saying that much, as they are absolute morons who rely on their helmets to control the Vermilion. But Machia, she's quite talented indeed. Unlike the others, she is so talented and powerful, she doesn't need a helmet to control the Vermilion. It is also believed she can take a stronger secondary form as well. However, despite these highly efficient leadership, the Vermilion as a race were doomed to extinction. Having served the Time Twins loyally, the stupidity of Blunk and Ragmunk eventually had the pair destroy them and force them to meld into the Iron Doom. They also betrayed Machia for admittedly much dumber reasons. This of course backfired as without Machia, the Time Twins were outnumbered by Wu and the ninja Kai and Nia. Due to Wu's sacrifice, the Time Twins and the Vermilion were lost to time. As far as we can know, this was the end of the race. Though, considering that Wu also survived, it is possible that they are still alive, we just haven't seen them yet. So what can we learn? Do not put blind faith in any leaders, for they are not bound by the same loyalty that you give them. I am Sensei the Dark Master, and join me next time in... The Lore of Ninjago.